So right here, this is a pattern. It's called a geometric sequence. Because what you're doing is you have an exponential decay going on. So to find the, the pattern, or it's called the common ratio, is how this geometric sequence is decaying. It's called a common ratio. So most of you could look and just see what are you dividing by as you get smaller. And most of you can see I'm dividing by 4. Great. The formula to find that is really what you're going to do to find R, your common ratio, is you take the second term and divide by the first term. Or you could take the third term and divide by the second term. It's your call. So I'm going to take the second term, 20, and divide by the first term, and I get 1 fourth. Now, think about that. Aren't you dividing by 4? Some of you could just look at it and go, ah, I'm dividing by 4. And when you divide by 4, isn't that multiply by a fourth? Dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by a fourth. So you don't have to sit there and divide the two. You can see it for most of you quickly. So that is your common ratio. That's the ratio that's in common as it decays. You're dividing by 4 repeatedly. Now, I'm going to make a rule that will help me find future values in this pattern. Now, some of you can just keep the pattern going to find future values as well. But we're going to make a rule. Now, to make the rule, you need the term before the first term and the common ratio. This is your common ratio. So I need the term before the first term. Right there is my first term. So what would be right in front of that first term? What would be the number right in front? Well, aren't you going to, if you're dividing by 4 to the right, aren't you going to multiply by 4 to the left? And if you multiply by 4, don't you get 320? So my rule is going to be the term before my first term, which is 320. My r, which is 1 fourth, to the end. And I'm done. That rule comes from the term before the first term, r, and n is what term? So if I want, for instance, the seventh term, can I plug in 7? If I want to check, could I simply plug in 1? If I plug 1 there, and what you'll see when you plug in 1, you get 80. If I plug in 2, should I get 20? If I plug in 3, should I get 5? You can always check it with your calculator to make sure you wrote it correctly. So, next question. Find the seventh term. Well, can I just put 7 right there? Yeah. So we're going to write 320, 1 fourth to the seventh. And then you simply use your calculator, and you're going to get a fraction, and that fraction can then be approximated as a decimal. So what you get here is, for the fraction, you're going to get 5 over 256. And for a decimal, when you put that in decimal value of that, you get 0 0.019. So those, that's a decimal and a fraction value for it. As you can tell, it's very small. And as you keep going, so the eighth term, won't it be a fourth of that? And then the ninth term will be a fourth of that. And it, do you see how small they're getting? Do you see how we're slowly basically adding nothing, almost? All right. So this next question is the sum of the first seven terms in the series. This word series means the sum of a sequence. So if you hear the word series... You're thinking the sum of a pattern. When you hear sequence, you're asking for the pattern. So I'm going to sum up the first seven terms. Well, could I just keep this pattern going and add them all up? Yeah, but I could also use this rule. It makes it much easier than sitting there and adding up seven numbers. So to do this rule, I simply look at my information, and this says the first term. Well, wouldn't that be 80? All right times 1 minus, what's r? r is 1 fourth. And what's my, what's my n? My n is 7. Can you see that actually is a 7 there? Because isn't that the number of terms you want to add up? And then 1 minus r. Now, that would be a pain to do on your own. It almost really, really hard. But you put it in a calculator, can you get a decimal and fraction? That's what we're looking for. Try it out. So this, when you put in your calculator, you get 27,305 over 
256, which that's pretty easy to calculate in your head. No, that's a joke. That would not be good. Now, if you approximate that as a decimal, you get 106.6601, if you can expand the decimals out, which these are terrible without calculators, but you're allowed a calculator to crunch this. If you were to keep this pattern going for seven terms and add them all up, you would get these two as well. So this was a finite series. We only added seven terms. Here, I'm going to add up an infinite number of terms in the series, meaning I'm going to add to the 88 billion term and more, which after a while, aren't you basically going to start adding really anything? Okay, look how small this was. Aren't you really quickly going to add nothing, basically? Such small values is almost in insignificant. So if you really think about it, won't your answer be close to this? Because on the seventh term, I'm already this small, so I'm just going to keep adding smaller and smaller stuff. So it's somewhere around 106. Let's wait and see. Here's the formula. You simply use this formula, and it crunches it for you. It's kind of cool. So if I take my first term, which is 80, I divide it by 1 minus my r, which is 1 fourth. If I stick that in my calculator, you will get 320 divided by 3, which, if you get the decimal approximation, which makes more sense for understanding something, for, for this problem, you get 106.6 repeating, which, aren't these almost identical? You see how close this is? It just, it almost if your calculator wasn't, if it was rounding or if you kind of truncated it, you would almost think they're the same. So, if we added this sequence up forever and kept it going, it would get closer and closer to this. If we add the first seven, we get this. To find the seventh term, we use put seven into this function. Sequences are the pattern. Series are the sum of a pattern. This is called a finite because you're doing seven terms. This is called an infinite or infinite, which you're adding up unlimited terms in the pattern.